Good afternoon, everyone. New paper out. Is there a connection between cosmic rays, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions? We're at the dawn of the modern cosmic ray maximum. Krakatoa awakens. Looking over thousands of years of time, grand solar minimums stick out due to eruptive activity. Let's go back 45 BC, 240 BC. We see the same thing. Cycles. It's all about the cycles. And the cosmic ray intensity spins mark the cloud mystery for you. And this incredible shot set in by the Wyoming Road and Weather Conditions group on Facebook. We're going to need to bring some of our agriculture indoors. Sprouting is a great way to do it. Trueleafmarket.com. Adapt2030 link is below along with the links to tonight's images and stories. New article from Principia Scientifica, July 2nd. What they're doing is collating and combining all the information so far over the last year of reports, videos, ideas from others in this space about the connection between cosmic rays, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. Because we're going into the dawn of the cosmic ray maximum, if you will, as we get in deeper to the grand solar minimum. There's so many peer-reviewed studies out there now showing a strong connection between volcanic activity and climate change during these grand solar minimums. They reference here Ben Davidson from Suspicious Observers. They also have the Disaster Prediction app. It's all about the sun's effects on our Earth. Electromagnetic connections. You can get more information on that at QuakeWatch.net. But these galactic cosmic rays penetrating into the silica-rich volcanoes and exciting and causing a bubbling effect. This would explain 9 out of the 11 events during solar magnetic activity lows. They're still trying to put this whole causation of galactic cosmic rays and volcanic eruptions together, but when we're looking at it, Ben states it here really well. We've reached the dawn of the modern cosmic ray maximum, grand solar minimum. Now, if you don't know what cosmic rays are, galactic cosmic rays, you can check out this free video on YouTube called The Cloud Mystery. It's a simple, easy way to understand how climate change is affected by galactic cosmic rays and where we are going to head into the future. Because when you start to look at cycles, it's not just about the 11-year solar cycle from solar maximum to solar minimum. We need to go back on cycles, inside cycles, inside cycles. 105 years, 210 years, 400 years, 2,000 years. And then we can really get a good correlation of do we find a connection at all between grand solar minimums and volcanic eruptions? So I want to point you here and let you take a look at the 1980s, 1990s. It's just two dashes before the year 2000. And you can see we come into the low activity. Now, these were the volcanic eruptions that occurred during that time, El Chinchon and Pinatubo. This is on a more recent time frame. Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Diamond over there, YouTube channel you should definitely check out, daily updates on weather anomalies across the planet. He's talking about a very strong correlation between solar activity and the largest seismic events and volcanic events. So with that said, Large is what we would be looking for here. So I want to take you back 2,000 years of time. Can you pick out the grand solar minimums? Let's start off with 535 AD, late antique little ice age. 1280, wolf minimum. What's that, late 1400s? Sporer minimum. Monitor minimum right at the 1600s didn't have too much Activity, though, even though it was one of the lowest and coldest periods on the Earth in the last 2,000 years. But then we had the Tambora eruption, Dalton minimum, year without a summer. We can take a step further back behind the zero mark into the B.C. era. So 47 B.C. or so, there's a stand out there. And then that line right at 79 A.D., that's the Vesuvius eruption. And if you go a little further back, 247 BC, you can also see some activity there. Those don't even have names in the grand solar minimum. But I did want to point out here the collapse of the UN dynasty, also around 1280. 
we can see the global stratospheric volcanic sulfate. Just talks about how much ash and sulfur dioxide is pushed into the atmosphere from these eruptions. And even though we had some other activity late 1400s, it seems like the outlier is very discernible right there at that 1280 eruptive force prior to, during, and then out of. And speaking of that, not only are all the planets lined up on one side of the sun for the next two weeks, going into the grand solar minimum, and then Krakatoa awakens. Now here's the interesting thing. The government down in Jakarta doesn't know what to do to even know how to evacuate that many people within five to ten minutes because those tsunami waves that came out of the 1883 eruption were 150 foot tall. The volcanic eruption at this point, if it was anywhere close to the 1883 eruption, would ground air travel across Singapore for at least six months. And if you ground air travel out of Singapore for six months, or even say one month, you're going to have to reroute air travel across the entire planet. That is going to absolutely have its own set of effects. And looking through Principia Scientifica, if you go ahead and type in Grand Solar Minimum into the search bar on the right side, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of other articles to take a look through about what to expect, repeating cycles, all based on what we're going to experience and are experiencing right now in this Grand Solar Minimum. And I want to thank the crew over at Wyoming Road and Weather Conditions Facebook for sending this image in here. Stunning. You can take a look at their Facebook page, Road and Weather Conditions Wyoming, where they share travel alerts, bulletins with you in case you're traveling there. You can stay safe on the roads. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you found value in this type of information, please remember to subscribe and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. Also, if you want more commentary, weekly podcast, mini Ice Age conversations, posting three days a week at the minimum, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, and anywhere you can find a podcast across the net.